Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Nate Kurz, if you've not met me before, and I'm the associate vicar here, and I'm going to be uh, reading our passage today and then opening that passage up and hearing what God might want to say to us here in Molsey through his word to us. So I'm just going to read that out now. It is going to come up on the screens anyway, but if you'd like to follow around along in your Bible, it's uh, coming from Matthew chapter 25, starting at the 14th verse. And it's in a series of, of different parables, um, and so this is, um, it starts with this. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold, to another, two bags, and to another, one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gave five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid. Went out, I went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here it is. Here's what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gather where I have not set, um, scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, <clears throat> especially any pa passage that ends with weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's always good to pray as I open it up. So let me just pray. Father, we thank you that your word is timeless, that it cuts like a double-edged sword. And we pray as we open it up and we seek to understand it within the context of our community here in Molsey, that you would bring life challenge, encouragement to us all this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I, uh, I've actually had a very um, busy week this week, and, uh, and Mary helps me in so many ways. Um, but uh, because she's laid up and, and not being able to help in, in some ways, I've, I tasked her with um, getting me a joke ready uh, for this morning. And it's all about investment this morning, so I asked her to find me an investment joke. And this is one that she sent me. Um, and it goes like this. What's the biggest dif difference between men... And investment bonds. Answer, bonds mature. And uh, Tishy, you're not allowed to laugh. <laughs> they all heard that. Um, and and I, uh, I'm, I cannot think why she would have chosen that in particular, um, but that's the one she sent me. So that's what you get. Um, and I want to consider two things along that, those lines around investment. 
The first is to look at what we have to invest with, what we have to invest with. And the second is to look at what is a wise investment. Um, and uh, I'm just going to get straight to the question at the beginning. And it is this, what has God entrusted you with? What has God entrusted to you? And I think with this uh, parable, we tend to go down one of two different roads when we start thinking about that question. We either uh, are thinking that it's speaking directly about money, as indicated in the NIV when it speaks about gold, or we think about our gifts, our abilities, our talents, as it says in other versions. Um, And actually, the talents there is referring to the amount of money Um, which was given at the time. It was called a talent. And fun fact, uh, actually the word uh, for talent in English comes uh, from this parable, but it's originally about um, a money talent. Um, But but we, I think, either go down one of those two roads of trying to understand this passage. But what I want to say to you this morning is that this passage is about both of those things and even so much more. It is about our investment on earth, all our investments, our money, our time, our energy, our skills, our abilities. It's about what we do also with the good news of Jesus Christ that we've been entrusted with. It is an all-encompassing question about our choices that we make in the here and now, in our lives on earth. And this question is set within the context of a number of parables that were coming before it, and they're all about preparing for Jesus' return. The theme is being prepared, not getting caught off guard. And so I want, uh, I want to get really practical this morning. And so if you have a piece of paper uh, nearby, that's great. Grab a pen also. If you don't and you have your uh, smartphone or, or tablet or something and you want to make notes, great. You can use that as well. If not, uh, then just keep it in mind. But what I would love for us to do is to do a bit of an inventory about what we've been entrusted with. What has God entrusted you with today? What have you been given? Talents, abilities, opportunities, friends, family, colleagues, money, time, creativity, all these things God may have invested within you. And I'd love us just to spend 20 seconds now uh, to think about those, to reflect on what God has given you. And that will help us understand the rest of the sermon and what I'd like uh, to draw out. So just take 20 seconds now, and we're going to think about uh, what God has entrusted to each and every one of us in, as individuals. And if you have a piece of paper, write it down, um, and that will help too. So let's just take 20 seconds now. Not loads of time for it, but hopefully that is a start. It will get you started thinking about what God has given to you, what he's blessed you with, what he's entrusted to you. And if you're in a pattern group, I think that is a wonderful place to explore this question. Um, Often it takes somebody else to look in at your life and to see uh, what God has blessed you with. You might not be able to see it yourself. And so do ask, uh, ask your pattern group. Um, what do you see in me that God has given to me? What are my unique talents, gifts, abilities, and opportunities that God has given to me? And, and it would be, I think you'll probably get some surprising answers and hopefully some encouraging ones there as well. So do do that. So my first point is that you have been entrusted. Just like the three characters in the parable, you, you have been entrusted. I know for some of us, it will be, uh, some of you will be more aware already of what God has given you. 
Others will struggle to see what God has put in your hand. And if that's you, if you're struggling now to think about that, I want to give you some homework. And that homework is to read Exodus chapter 4. It's not that long. And it is Moses' conversation with God where he tries to talk God out of calling him to free the people of Israel. And then once you've read that bit, you don't have to read the next uh, 15 chapters or whatever follows, but recall what Moses did for God, what God did through Moses. And then think about it within the context of Moses' reluctance, his sense of, I don't have anything to give. And one of the key questions in that passage, which I love, is uh, when Moses is doubting his ability to deliver on the call that God's placed on his life, God asks Moses, Moses this question, simply, what is in your hand? And he has his staff in his hand. So God uses even that. All he has is his staff. But God does miracles through his staff and uses that as a tool, an instrument, for God's purposes. So for those of you who are doubting you have anything to give, I'm sorry, on this occasion it's not a matter of opinion. Uh, you are wrong, I'm afraid to say. I'm afraid you are wrong on this occasion. It's just that simple. And it's not because I say so, but it's because Jesus says so. And um, it is because in this passage, Jesus presupposes that all have something to invest. It wouldn't be fair if some have some to invest and he comes back and asks uh, for a return on investment and some have been giving nothing. All have been entrusted. And so if you disagree with that, uh, that's not my business. Take it up with him. But that is his promise to each and every one of us. The third character of the Bible, he actually tries, to, tries that um, with God. He tries to take uh, the master and, and he says that I've not been entrusted. And it doesn't end well for him. So I don't, I don't, I don't advise going down that line. If you believe it or not, you have been entrusted by God. That is my first point and that is my first point done. Second point builds on that. And it is, assuming you've been entrusted, now you have a choice. How will you use it? And this choice also comes with a warning. We can either make an earthly investment, and in this parable it's really striking because the, uh, the, the, the third character, he actually buries his treasure in the earth. He makes a, a truly earthly uh, investment, and it didn't yield. But, um, so we can invest either in earthly purposes with what God gives us, or God's eternal purposes. His purposes here in Molsey, his purposes in our family, his purposes in our place of work, in our networks. God has a plan, and he wants to use us within it. And the most exciting picture that I can imagine for St. Mary's is a ministry of multiplication. Just like in this parable, we see a, a doubling of all those who have, in, who have invested what God has given to them and given it for his purposes. We see a doubling. And we're called to this ministry of multiplication, not addition. It's a ministry of multiplication. A ministry of addition, I think, looks like, you know, a few people doing just the best that they can. Jesus' vision for us is that we have all been given all that we need. And we are all called to take part in God's plan for transformation. We are all called. No bench warmers. No A team. No B team. Everyone plays. When I was playing sports in high school, I was, I was a bench warmer and I was on the B team. But that's not how it is in God's kingdom. We are all playing. We're all invited in. We're all given all that we need. And that is... Uh, it's a holistic vision. 
It's not just filling the rotors at church, although that is important too, but it's seeing what God has given you all around you, your whole life, and investing it. And I think it's just like uh, with a financial investment, this is going to be an exercise of research, it's going to be an exercise of reflection and of creativity. Returns on investment in, in the financial world don't come and just land in your lap. They come with proactivity, pursuing a fruitful investment, not waiting for it just to happen. So when is that, when's the last time that we have looked around us actively, proactively looked around us for what are the kingdom opportunities that God has put in our path? You know, um, 2020 is... It's certainly one of the strangest years I have ever lived through. But I think it has also changed the spiritual temperature around us. I think it's changed the conversation too. People have less answers to give and so many more questions. Are we there to answer those questions for people? What are those unique opportunities that 2020 is giving to us? God is not surprised that you, as an individual, are here in 2020. But why are you here? What has God got in store for you? What is the impact that God wants to make through your life? Who has God put in your way to bring hope to? Who has God put in your way to speak truth to? Who's God put in your way to show love to? Also, what ministries are sitting uh, within your heart? Things that are ready to be stirred up by God. Ready either to be invested or they could be buried away. I think the question in this parable is stark. Jesus often used very stark pictures to show um, what he wanted to say. And the warning is stark as well. We are expecting the return of our Lord and Master. And he is expecting a return on his investment. Will we be embarrassed and thinking of excuses like the third character? Or will we be kind of grinning like a Cheshire cat when he says to us, well done, good and faithful servant. If earlier you couldn't uh, think of what you've been entrusted with, then I can tell you one thing for sure, no matter who you are. What you've been entrusted with is the message of eternal hope and transformation for this generation to hear. 2020 has been a sobering wake-up call for so many, shaking the very foundations of our lives. But will we be there? Will you be there to help those around us rebuild their lives on a solid foundation, the only sure foundation this world has? Will we use what we've been given for God's purposes. And all that sounds uh, perhaps a big, a bit grand, but just to bring it back to earth a little bit, I'll ask the same question that Moses got asked. What is in your hand? Simply that, what is in your hand? This is all God needs to do amazing things. That, that, that is the exciting part. Whatever you have is enough for God to do amazing things through your life. But we have a choice. We need to invest it and not bury it away. My hope and prayer is that we will. And Jesus' vision for the church is that we do. He's counting on us. He's trusting in us. And he's encouraging us throughout. I just want to pray for us as I finish. 
if you're able, um, I'd love you to stand and, and respond in, um, in that way. Lord, we come before you now. We pray that you stir up the gifts that you've given to us. Those which are hidden from our sight, Lord, we ask that you reveal them to us. Not for our sake, but for your kingdom's sake. Those ministries, those passions, those gifts of many kind, we pray that you stir those up within our community now. Might we see what you've entrusted us. And Lord, we, we trust you for a doubling, that you'll use what we give and you'll double it for your ministry. Help us to bring hope to the people around us, Lord. Empower us by your Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.